His first at bat lays down a bunt, flies down to first base. This guy just picked the ball up and took a bite out of it. No chance of throwing him out. It wasn't even that good of a bunt. Next at bat, he hits one about 40 rows up in right center field. Three innings later, he throws a laser beam, one hop off the turf, throws a guy out at the plate. And I remember looking at Rusty going, have you ever seen anything like that before in your life? He goes, never. It was, wow, this guy, he's a generational ball player. I remember seeing Daryl and thinking, oh my goodness, this is literally the greatest athlete I've ever seen in my life. Wow. wow. <laughs> Amazing. The greatest. Can you imagine? What, now see, we actually see him out the corner of our eye. He's laughing at, at, at hearing that. Uh, can you imagine what those years were like in baseball? Uh, Daryl Strawberry at the top of his game with the New York Mets. It's been now 35 years since the Mets took home their second World Series win. And a new ESPN documentary takes a look behind the scenes at the talented athletes that made it happen. That's right. It's called Once Upon a Time in Queens. And with us now to tell us all about it, three-time World Series champion, Daryl Strawberry. Welcome, Daryl. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, it's good to have you back. What, what, what did you think hearing, hearing us, hearing those words, the, the, the generational athlete, one of the greatest I've ever seen? What, what, what is that like to be, to be hearing that word, those words about yourself again? <laughs> I, it was it's was just amazing, you know, when you look back after, you know, all the things that you accomplished and, you know, playing in New York in those years with the Mets. And when I came up, we were uh, such a bad team. And then we just started to go in a new direction because of the, the general manager, Frank Cashin, and just knowing that I was a young player, uh, that I was going to be there for a very long time. And, and it just bring excitement to the fans in New York. I think the greatest part of playing baseball in my career was playing in Queens, playing in New York, playing with the Yankees. It was just baseball and fans, and you know, it was just an unbelievable time to be able to do that. Yeah, Daryl, so you mentioned you started off with the Mets eight years there, then you did move on to the Yankees, and so uh, inquiring minds would like to know, mm. which mm. was better, Mets <laughs> or Yankees? Uh. <laughs> Everybody always go with that. Which one was better? I always say New York. It's New <laughs> York City. It's, 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 it's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to play. You know, a lot of players come there. They don't really know how good it is really to play in front of the fans there. And if you don't play well, uh, they're going to boo you and they're going to let you know you suck. And that was that was the greatest thing about playing in New York is, is being able to adjust to the fans and knowing that they love the game of baseball when you play there. Oh, New York fans are usually such a docile bunch. Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine them booing you, Daryl. Uh, but, yeah, we're talking about that win, that Mets, that uh, that World Series 35 years ago. We had the anniversary here now. But do you, is it, is, do you remember it almost like it was yesterday? Do some of those memories start to fade a bit? They kind of fade a bit when you're <laughs> away from the game. But I think really what was important is, is being able to see the 30 for 30 because it brought back a lot of memories. And it brought back the fact that, you know, we struggled uh, of, of winning when I was a rookie. And then, you know, 84, we got better. 85, we got better. We came close. And, you know, we lost to the Cardinals. And I remember that feeling when we went into that locker room. We just thought to ourselves, our locker room was quiet. We were going to never let anybody step on us again. We were just going to not let teams walk over us. And we were going to come back in 86 and just take advantage of it. And we did. We had a great group of guys. We had great personalities. And, you know, we loved to win together. We loved to fight together. Whatever we we did together, it was a team thing. And that's what you love so much about playing with guys like that. Daryl nice. Strawberry, Darryl. <laughs> thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for letting us give you a little bit of hard time there. Everyone, you can catch Once Upon a Time in Queens on ESPN+. Plus. He would be a great marriage therapist. I mean, he's a great or, mediator. Or like a he's just, yes, or he's yet, great. ambassador. Yeah, he's great. He's very, great. very good. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.